been daydreaming this keyboard for over a month, and I still am not 100% sure I know how I feel about it. This is the $969 Artifact Industries Type 180, a board that was in part designed by Nodo Studio, a design studio you may know for their work with Bang & Olufsen. The board is fixed TKL Singen layout, and offered in hotswap only. The only layout customization that you can do is choosing between win keyless or win key, but there are three material plates to choose from. This is a burger mount board. It's a gasket mounting method that utilizes rubber or silicone o-rings to isolate the PCB and plate assembly from the rest of the case while top mounting it. And I have to be honest, this is the best execution of burger mounting that I've ever seen in a board for reasons we'll get more into later. This case is 100% aluminum with no backway and is currently only offered in one color, clear anodization, which they call moon silver. Besides the mounting method, in my opinion, the coolest piece of this board is the removable feet, which offer both a 4 degree and an 8 degree typing angle and are easily removable. Let's talk aesthetics. So while a lot of people are saying this looks like Mickey Mouse or a frog, I do think that Noda Design's design language really shines through in this board, and it's really obvious the care that they've taken in making this board unique and fitting their particular aesthetic. I love the micro grooving on the sides, the absolutely perfect fitment of the feet, and honestly, I don't even mind the gap underneath. I think it makes the board unique. I think the LED slot on the front is a particularly nice, if expensive to add touch. And I do appreciate that they went no expenses spared in their efforts to make this fit the aesthetic that they want. I am exclusively going to be using it with my frog dust mat though. Sorry, not sorry. I also think that extreme attention to detail and no expenses spared approach also applies to the internals. The custom poured muting pad, the custom grommets, and the torque limiting screwdriver are not only important, but all very expensive to include and add. But I think they're vitally important for where this board really shines, that burger mounting method. I'm gonna go off on a little bit of a rant here, I'm warning you now. In my opinion, the reason why most people dislike burger mount is because they tend to over tighten the screws and over compress the gasket mounted O-rings including a torque limiting screwdriver and including your own thicker custom molded o-rings completely eliminates that and make sure that across the entire board the gaskets are going to be evenly compressed which makes the typing experience much better than your standard burger mount to me this shows a really excellent understanding of why certain things are important in internals of keyboards which is why so many of the decisions that i'm going to be talking about now make me so upset and confused despite this board's almost a thousand dollars price tag, this board has no back weight. Not only does that mean that this board only weighs in at 1.8 kilograms, it also means that the board is resonant. <laughs> When there's no break in the bottom of the board, it turns the board into a drum, which means it has a propensity to sound more hollow. While this absolutely can be remedied by using the foam included in the kit, it feels really bad to have to use foam to make a thousand dollar keyboard sound good. Now, they have said that they are looking into making the back part weigh more, but I'm not sure if they're going to be doing that by adding a back weight or simply using an alternate material for the bottom. You may have also noticed one of the absolutely most heinous problems with this board, especially considering the price point, the gap between the keycaps and the board. Thankfully, they have already addressed this and said that they will be fixing this for client units. They also are looking into using a finer bead blasting finish, making the adjustable feet stainless steel, and adjusting the mounting point underneath the stabilizer to improve spacebar sound. All of these are excellent changes that absolutely need to be made, but I wish they had been caught during the almost three year development period that the support went through, rather than only being caught after review units were sent out. I also wish we had some sort of guarantee or proof of concept for those who are pre-ordering this board so they Knew what they were getting into. Pre-ordering a product when I don't actually know what the final iteration of it is going to look like is just not something I want to do, especially when the product costs almost a thousand dollars. Overall, I do really highly respect the clear love and attention to detail that was put into this board. I think the design is super unique. I really appreciate the no holds barred approach that they made towards designing this keyboard, and I really, really want to see more from the studio. The design is undeniably high end, and it's very easy for anyone who knows what they're looking at to see where the thousand dollar price tag came from. But I think there was a fundamental misunderstanding of what enthusiasts want out of a board at this price point, which makes this board really only for a very specific group of people. People who really enjoy burger mount and want to try the top of the line in terms of that style of mounting method. People who really enjoy this sort of design language and approach to design and want to support the making of this board. 
and people who want to have an adjustable height board with a premium feel, being able to swap between that four degree and that eight degree typing angle whenever they want. I also think your preference in sound has to lean towards wanting foam in it. This doesn't sound like your standard foamed up board, but it still has that more muted feel that people who really hate foam would not enjoy. I've put together a bunch of sound tests for you guys to hear. I'll roll those now so you can form your own opinion. The board is a little bit stiff for my personal typing preference, but you absolutely can get bounced out of these gaskets, especially if you're a more heavy typist. And I think the gasketing truly was done really well and is a real bright point in this board. Overall, I don't think this board was particularly for me, but I also don't think it was designed for me. I think it was designed for a very specific subset of people who actually, I think, would really, really enjoy this board. Let me know what you guys think. I'm very interested in hearing your take on the board and any opinions that you may have on where they chose to invest versus where they didn't. I'd also love to hear what changes you'd personally make to this board because I know I have a list myself. I'll see you guys in the next one or on our next stream. Until then, happy typing. I almost forgot to mention there is currently a giveaway running on my Instagram where we're giving away one of these for free. Pop on over there to enter if you want.